up everyone? I'm your female Taku and I'm here to review episode 10 of Tales of Hysteria The Cross. And you know what? I'm gonna say a lot of good about this episode, which has been, it's been a while since I reviewed Tales of Hysteria without giving any complaints or comparisons or just, you know, mainly complaints about me wishing it was Berseria and me wishing that we had a velvet back. But this time, no, I'm not gonna do that. You wanna know why? Because we got into the good stuff. We're finally transferring over to an official arc. So that's gonna be great. And this is gonna be our first war. So let me start off with the beginning of this episode before I get to the details of the war. Ah, you Saray ex Miklio fangirls. Oh my gosh. You probably went crazy crazy over the first couple of minutes because the first two minutes of this episode it was literally <laughs> an entire innuendo between Saray and Mikleo because when they were getting the water out of the well and stuff oh their dialogue <laughs> word for word their entire conversation is just in a full-on innuendo just just go back to the first two minutes if you don't understand what I'm talking about you will see this. oh okay just <laughs> moving on from that remember when Edna first appeared and I said I wasn't too sure why so many people thought of her as best girl uh, people told me in the comments of that video to wait until she meets Mikleo that those are some of the best moments with her character and yeah I guess you're right I did enjoy the the odd little banter between the two I don't know why Edna feels like she has to be some have some like some sort of authority over Mikleo like she's always calling him like a kid and stuff I really don't know why she's doing that but it, it makes her more entertaining of a character Mikleo he's just still like what the fuck why are you doing this he's just like what I'm with Mikleo, I don't understand why she's doing this, but I enjoy her character more because of it, so it's whatever, I guess. Other small things with this episode, again, I really love Attack. He's just a great little mascot to the series, man. He's not annoying. He he doesn't have like this really squeaky, high-pitched voice and stuff, and he's an entertaining little character. I don't know, I really like Attack. But anyway, enough of the small stuff. Now we can get into the main stuff with this episode. First, let's talk about Rose with the Sparrow Feathers. So, Rose, we met her back over in episode three, I believe. She was one of the first people who, one of the first humans who interact with Saray when he went over to Lady Lake. Rose and the Sparrow Feathers, they're not only merchants, but they're also a gang of assassins. And they thought that killing Alicia would be the best thing to do because they didn't want any more hatred to spread and stuff like that. So they thought killing Alicia would be best and Alicia's just all like, oh, okay, is that your plan? All right, go ahead, do it. Fine, go ahead, do it. And uh, Rose is like, holy shit, this chick's serious. <laughs> so Rose put her blade down and then she's like, okay, I could tell you're real. All right, so I'm just gonna go. But then Alicia was all like, hold up. Why don't you fight alongside me over at this upcoming battle? And Rose agrees, so that's gonna be pretty cool. I, I like this new addition. Uh, Rose is pretty chill, and I can't wait to see her fully go in. The fact that she has, you know, this whole gang inside her. I guess she, I'm assuming that she's like the leader of the Sparrow Feathers. Now let's talk about Saray. Saray has met a quite an interesting dilemma. For we got to meet our first human Hellion. Now I never realized this, but until now, we've only met Seraphim Hellions. We've never met a human Hellion. And the thing is, is that the Seraphim can't help Saray when it comes to purifying a uh, hu humanized Hellion because the S Saray, the, who is a shepherd, of course, he has to accept the human malvoyance from the Hellion. So this is kind of a problem because the Seraphim can't do that. And so because only Saray can, when he accepted the Malvoyance, unfortunately he it was too much for him and he kept on like falling all over the place and stuff. It was a lot to take in. He got weaker and stuff. And so Lila was just a like, listen, I know you want to go into the war, but the problem is is that you're gonna have to take on a lot of Malvoyance and you don't want that, as you can see it tires you out. But Saray, he realizes what he has to do, so he's going to go in and do the best 
that he can. Another interesting thing that I didn't know you could do is that Saray went over to a graveyard and he purified a sorrowful spirit, someone who was already dead and purified their sorrowful spirit. And I didn't think you could do that. You could still purify those who are dead. And that was this episode, a very entertaining one. And I'm excited to see where this arc goes. We finally had the plot hit. No more prologue, no more tutorial. We are done. Let's get into this. Catch later as a review ReZero. I'm your female otaku, sayonara.